Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to The Magister. Uh, full disclosure, I was not actually planning on doing more episodes of this, but uh, I enjoyed the first one. We didn't get quite as far as I would have liked to, and uh, I've still got time to kill, so <laughs> let's uh, jump back in and uh, see where it takes us. Oh, and uh, today's episode is dedicated to Drakiv. Thanks for your support. That said, let's get started. Okay, now, when we left off last time, we were just hitting the end of day one. It's currently late evening, which does limit our options a fair amount. The majority of the NPCs won't be available, though uh, we might be able to catch a couple of them at the tavern. Still, we uh, do have a few options. We have to meet Maritz at the tavern. We need to uh, investigate the graveyard for the gravekeeper. And we uh, can still go to the signal tower. Let's go ahead and start with that. The province of the Empire is connected by the signal towers. Forming a network of towers, a message is sent from one tower to another, using a mechanism of shutters that open and close. Spotters on the next tower then copy the message and pass it along, until it reaches its intended destination. Neat. This man wears thick glasses and is constantly tapping out messages on the signal tower board. He glances up as you approach, a startled look on his face. Greetings. Hello, Magister. I'm Olaf. How can I help you today? He asks. What do you do here? I send and receive messages to the capital, he explains. There's a network of towers that stretches all the way across the Empire. A true technological marvel it is. Okay. What do you know about the murder? I don't know anything about it, Magister. I rarely leave this tower except to get supplies. Mostly the uh, messenger boys run errands for me and deliver messages and such. Huh. One more thing. I heard the tower was being repaired the morning after the murder. Ah, yes, Magister. That's true. He adjusts his spectacles. Two days before your messenger arrived, bandits attacked the tower and damaged its mechanisms. We've been repairing it at full speed ever since. It's important for the signal towers to work so that we can talk to the capital. We finally fixed it two days later. You can imagine the backlog of messages. Took us hours to sort out that day. Interesting. Thanks. All right, so some intriguing information there, but nothing that helps us just yet. Let's see if we can uh, put in a call for some assistance here. I'd like to send a message, please. Of course. There's a small fee for each message, but we'll waive it since you're a magister. Always happy to help the authorities. Who would you like to send the message to? I'd like to file a progress report. You file a report on everything you have discovered so far. The familiar feeling of going through this procedure stirs a strange emotion within you. You have done this many times before, on many different cases, and you take a moment to reflect on the various lessons you have learned from them over the years. Ooh, free skill point. Here, send this report to the capital. Uh, one more thing.
I'd also like to recruit a companion. You have a network of contacts in the capital. You can request one of them to come to Silverhurst. Rudolph, the mercenary, skilled with a huge blade. Baldric, the sage, intelligent and knowledgeable. Gregor, the spy, stealthy and sneaky. Hmm. Well, we overlap pretty heavily with Baldric, because we're already playing an intellectual. But we can't get access to the alchemy skill, so we'll at least need him to handle that for us. After that, we'll switch off to uh, Gregor or Rudolf. Baldric, Seven Sisters Tower. You sent a message to the Sage. He will arrive in Silverhurst tomorrow morning. All right, I think we are done here. Let's go uh, check out the graveyard. Ah, right, we have a skill point. Let's see here. I think our two best options here are either Herbology, which has a lot of healing utility, not to mention we can use it to analyze those leaves we found, or Thievery, which lets us set and disarm traps, as well as uh, pick locks, which can get us a fair amount of uh, bonus loot, not to mention it might also have some utility in solving this case. Hmm. We'll go with uh, thievery first. I'll probably revisit herbology in the future, though. Okay. This is probably a terrible idea, but let's go check out the graveyard. You hear a growling and shuffling coming from the cemetery. As you get nearer, you see the cemetery overrun by a pack of wolves. Howling as they sense your presence, the wolves turn their attention to you. Oh dear. Yeah, we uh, probably should have waited for our friend to get to town. All right, so we're up against three wolves, and the biggest one is preparing a blast attack. That is a delayed directional attack, so we theoretically have time to get out of the way. <laughs> Not a great starting hand. Let's go ahead and toss out a trap and get clear of that blast. Oof, <laughs> and now we're up against the edge of the map. As the uh, tooltip states, we'll want to move, or each subsequent attack will do an extra 25% damage. Ah, now this we can work with. Tactics is an interesting card. We can only use it once per fight, and it lets us choose from an assortment of different options. In this particular case, um, we know we don't have any other healing cards, so we'll go with the hit point recovery. Okay, let's see if we can finish off the little guy. Hmm, 
didn't quite go as planned. That's one. Hoping there'd be knockback damage. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, we uh, definitely bit off more than we could chew here. This is enough to take out the other one. Not quite. Run away! Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, I messed that up. Ah, there we go. Sure we're going to survive this, but uh, it's worth a shot. No defensive cards. I think we're about to drop. Oh, come on. And down we go. Well, as you can see, this is um, obviously not a roguelite. There's no permadeath. I'm not a big fan of save scumming unless I have to, so uh, we'll just head back to the end. Ah, uh, looks like the guards managed to drag me back to the inn. Now, I will note that, um, while that system is fairly forgiving, we didn't get off completely scot-free. We're obviously at minimal health, and if it uh, weren't already late night, we would have just lost precious time, too. Anyway, let's, uh... Go ahead and have a chat with these new characters here. We'll get some rest and uh, we'll take another run at the graveyard on night two, after we've recruited our companion.
Inns like this play an important function for the travelers in the empire. They provide a place to eat and rest, and the innkeepers who maintain them are frequently a good source of news and gossip. This one seems to have a stable attached, where mounted travelers can hitch their griffies for a small fee. Hey, look at that. Extra health, plus 15 max HP. Quick lock picks. You now succeed automatically at all lock picking attempts. That's more of a convenience perk. There's no real penalty for failing a lock pick check. Swift discard. Choosing the sprint option when discarding a card now grants plus two move instead of plus one. That is interesting. I don't really like to rely on the discard mechanic though, so we'll just go for um, extra health instead. Oh, and that also restored our hit points. In theory, we could go back and do another run on the graveyard, but we'll hold off on that until we've got more firepower. You see a woman carrying a huge backpack. It looks like she's selling things from it. The bag is full of various merchandise. Pleased to meet you, Magister. My name is Isabella, and I'm the local trader here. If you need to buy or sell anything, I'm the one you should look for. Mm. You take a deep breath and focus your senses on the trader. Shrewd expression, scanning you from head to toe. Figuring out how much money you have, perhaps? Expensive clothes, shiny, heavy, golden rings and bracelets. Lots of them. Thin frame, moves quickly, frail. Eager, looks happy, makes you feel like buying something from her. Conclusion, the trader is frail but wealthy. She carries a big bag. Hello there, Magister. What can I do for you today? I'd like to buy something. She smiles apologetically. Normally, I have a lot of items for sale, Magister. But this late at night, I'm only interested in buying more items to sell tomorrow. If you have anything to sell, I'll happily take it off your hands. Unfortunately, I won't be able to sell you anything until tomorrow. Come see me at the village square then. Got it. I don't think we actually have anything to sell her, though. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. The uh, rusty weapon is for the blacksmith. Yeah, I guess that's it. We do at least know she's a suspect, though. We'll need to talk to Sigmar, too. You notice a patron sitting quietly in the corner. He appears to alternate between sipping his drink and nodding off to sleep. There is a handful of dice on the table in front of him. Good evening. He turns his head lazily towards you. Oh ho, I see we now have a different magister, he says, laughing at his own little joke. The name's Moritz. What can I do for you, sir? The smirk on his face seems to be mocking you. I have some questions about the murder. Questions? Tell you what, beat me at a drinking contest or beat me three times at a dice game and you can ask all the questions you want. He gestures enthusiastically at the dice in front of him. Who knows? You might even make a few crowns tonight. I think if we were actually playing a psychopathic magistrate, we could just uh, beat the information out of him. But since we are of a more intellectual bent, I think we're best off avoiding the drinking contest. We just don't have the constitution for it. And we'll go for the dice game instead. All right. He rubs his hands together gleefully. The game is called Coward's Dice, 
and you'll only need one crown to play. Ever played it before? No. What are the rules? The rules are simple. We each roll two dice, and the highest total wins. Simple, right? There are two more rules, though. First, after rolling, you may choose stop, coward's roll, or roll again. If you choose coward's roll, you roll one more die, then you must stop. If you roll again, you roll two more dice. The result is then added to your total, until you choose to stop. Secondly, if your total ever exceeds 14, you lose all your points. Wording is a bit complicated, but um, it's actually a pretty straightforward game. It's essentially blackjack, but played with dice, and 14 being your target number instead of 21. I'm not much of a math guy, but uh, I do know my way around some D6s. Let's give it a shot. Okay, looks like we got a 10. So if we go with a coward's roll, we only have a 1 in 3 chance of going bust. There we go. That is our first of three victories. I think you all get how this works, so uh, we'll just jam through the rest of it. Seven. It's about a 50-50 shot. That's fine. We've got gold to spare. Ah, <laughs> took a chance, didn't pay off. Hmm, we have to risk one more. Nice. That should do it. Let's see what he's got for us. So, tell me what you know about the murder. All right, but only because you are my friend, Magister, he grins. So, I might have seen something interesting that night. That night, I was drinking as usual. Maybe a little more than usual. Everything's a little foggy. But I remember two things. First, my loot. I found it that very morning and brought it with me to the inn. I played the loot that night to entertain everyone with it. But uh, they didn't seem to uh, appreciate it. The second weird thing. The second thing is, sometime during that night, I happened to glance out the window and I saw a face looking back at me. Shocked me so bad I almost spit out my drink. The face, it looked exactly like Richolf. I blinked and the face vanished. It was all very strange. Okay, so the gambler found a loot the day of the murder. And he spotted someone named Richolf out the window. Though I don't think we've actually met anyone named Richolf yet. The gambler said he saw a face in the window the night the Magister was murdered. You should find out who Richolf is and speak with him. Yeah, that's what I thought.
And of course, we uh, can't just ask him who this guy is. Oh well. The innkeeper's face lights up as he sees you. Magister, great news. The barmaid is back, and it's all thanks to you. So, what can I do for you today? Well... I will need a room for the night. I believe that will also boost our reputation with him. Ah, we do have a room available. It's only two crowns a night for our standard room. Very well. Pleasure doing business with you, sir, he says, pocketing your coins quickly. Here's your key. Just head on upstairs and have a good rest. Thank you. Actually, we do have gold to spare. Let's see if we can max out our reputation with him. Uh, maybe by buying something else. What's today's special? If you're hungry, today's special is hot and sour chicken soup, seasoned with lemongrass, lime leaves, galangal, lime juice, fish sauce, and crushed red chili peppers. For you, Magister, it's just one crown. That actually does sound delicious, and now I'm hungry. You pay a crown to the innkeeper, and he serves you the meal. It's delicious. You feel full after eating it. Maybe a bit too full, in fact. Your stomach starts rumbling. Oh, that actually gave us a permanent boost to hit points. That is good to know. Sadly, it did not boost our rep, so we'll just move on. It's Sigmar, the Councilman. Sigmar, the Councilman, is sitting around, contentedly staring at the roaring fireplace. He stares at you as you walk nearer. Hey there, how can I help you today? Hmm. You take a deep breath and focus your senses on the town official. Old, white hair and beard, still intelligent and sharp. Clothes, expensive and well-maintained. As a councilman of the empire, he must be quite well-paid. Hands of an educated bureaucrat, not particularly strong. Frail with age, smoking from a clay pipe. Seems sincere, radiates helpfulness. You feel he can be trusted. Conclusion, the councilman is a man of moderate wealth, smokes from a clay pipe. He has spent a lifetime as a bureaucrat for the Empire. Do you need help with anything? He smiles at you. I appreciate the offer, but it's getting late. Perhaps we can talk again tomorrow. Get some rest first, Magister. We'll talk in the morning. Got it. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, while you can still have some limited interactions with certain NPCs, once you get to late night, uh, most of the normal interactions will be blocked out. Since we are not heading back to the graveyard, I guess we'll uh, just go get some rest. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and crack these doors. We don't really need the gold, and we definitely don't want to overdo it with stealing, but um, this will give us a chance to check out the lockpicking minigame. Oh, right. I guess I should uh, explain what I'm doing here. 
This is a pretty basic minigame. You just want to uh, find the right combination of tumblers to hit. You can uh, narrow down the most likely culprits by just watching those little sound effects that pop up. There we go. Someone else is renting this room. You search through their belongings and find something. Looks like it's the hilt of a broken sword. Hmm, might be worth some money. No luck that time. A bottle of discolored wine. Delightful. Well, the important thing is we can sell it. A child's doll with a needle stuck in it. I believe those are called voodoo dolls. But what do I know? It's not the cleanest room, but at least you'll be sleeping on a real bed with a roof over your head. You've slept in worse places. You can feel the darkness enveloping you. The darkness and oblivion of sleep beckons from beyond the void. Your eyelids grow heavier. Huh. Morning already. It's your old friend, Baldric, the Sage of Seven Sisters. He was invaluable in solving many cases in the past. Perhaps he will also play a crucial role in this investigation. Greetings. Magister, he greets you in his usual curt manner. Any thoughts on the case? You need to identify three things. Motive, a reason for the murder. Opportunity, prove the murderer was in the inn that night. Method, well, you already found the pistol. If there are multiple suspects, gather clues to eliminate the possibilities. Peel away the lies, and the truth will appear. Okay. Take a look at this clue. Food from the crime scene? Here, give it to me. I'll run some alchemical tests on the food. Find me again tomorrow. Got it. Of course, we will uh, also require his assistance for other things, so... Let's go. All right, I'll follow you for today for a small payment of two crowns per day. Sure. Very well, I'm ready to assist. Okay, we are now in slightly better shape. Oh, you'll notice they've uh, relocked the doors. We could crack them open again, but... We'll hold off on that for now. That sort of thing does not go unnoticed. Hey, Magister. I need your help with something. The innkeeper gestures you over to the bar. Good morning, Magister. There's something I need your help with. You don't say. <laughs> you see, I found out that someone's been fiddling with the locks upstairs. I hate to say it, but I think there's a thief in the inn. I would appreciate it if you could help me catch him. Or her? In any case, I've strengthened the locks, so do keep an eye out and let me know if you see anything suspicious. 
Of course, I'll keep an eye out. The innkeeper looks relieved. Thank you, Magister. I've kept it hush-hush so far. But if word gets out that there's a thief, it's bad for business. You understand, of course. Yeah, uh, goodbye for now. Welcome back, Wanda. Let's go ahead and max our rep with the innkeeper. See what that gets us. Today's special is marinated grilled ribeye beef served with sweet and savory soy sauce, sugar, and pear juice, then grilled to perfection. Man, this game is really making me hungry. I'm gonna have to break for lunch soon. All right, let's go ahead and rent our room in advance. Oh, uh, I heard something that might interest you. He stops wiping the mug and leans closer. I heard there's someone west of the village square who wants to give you something. Huh, I'll look into it. Interesting. Well, that bears further investigation. Actually, I know we've got several characters and events waiting for us here, so... Let's go ahead and hit the pause button for now, and, um, you know what? We will pick up here next time. Like I said, uh, I am enjoying this, so I think we can do another episode or two. See you then.